Tired of wrestling with your Docker containers? Drowning in a sea of command line chaos? What if I told you there's a better way? A way to unleash the true power of Docker management with an interface so rich it feels like magic. Get ready to supercharge your workflow because today we're diving deep into Arcane, a Docker management system on steroids. This isn't just another tool. It's your new command center for effortless Docker control, complete with optional auto updates, deep insights, and so much more. I first came across Arcane uh, in a Reddit post um, about, well, according to this, 22 days ago. And I gotta be honest, I kind of just saved it as I do with a lot of these projects and put it off to the side. And then today I was browsing through Reddit in my saved posts and I thought, you know what, let's have a little look at this. Because up to now I've been using Dockage quite a lot and I've got a video on that here. And you may not be, you may be still using Compose Files in the traditional sense of the um, command line. And that's fair enough. But I literally just spun this up as I do with all my new projects before showing them to you. And my reaction was quite blown away quite quickly. I had to stop myself because I really, really enjoy giving my viewers my first true take, my first emotion, the raw emotion um, of what I feel. And I didn't even have to click a button before I started to have that overwhelming feeling. So this is um, basically, it's, it was upvoted 433 times. At the time, it was a little bit less, um, but it still piqued my interest because one of the things I do when I'm looking for projects to put on my YouTube channel is to kind of gauge the community and see, is this worthy? Is this something that people want to hear about? Going over to the Arcane GitHub, you've got... 653 stars it's been forked nine times and it's only on a watch list of about two but in my initial reactions i'm going to star this because this looks really good now it's got 18 releases and if we go back through the releases we'll see that the first pre-release was on april 22nd 2025 this year so it's already got quite active development and what i like about this is that it's already got really really nice branded documentation, setup features. One of the things that users cry out for a lot in the self-hosted home lab world is documentation. And they're doing a really good job of this already. The quick start guide couldn't be any more quicker than this. The prerequisites are literally this. You just need to have Docker and Docker Compose, which 99.99999% of you will already have. And the steps are really just create, uh, copying this Compose file, editing it for your needs, and then pumping it in. Now, like I said, I, for a long, long time now, I've been using Dockage. I love it. It's great. But it does lack some features, um, especially in volume management and network management. It's got basics um, for some of that, but not a lot. And essentially, it's just paste your compose file in. It has built-in EMV, and then you can kind of click around on the networks that you want to add or, or add your own. So, you know, pretty basic, um, but I've loved it, and I still love it, and it's still a great tool, and I will use it. it Fun fact, this is built by the same uh, developer who built Uptime Kuma. So a big shout out for that guy. That is great. And I'll leave links in the description for this too. Um, but yeah, essentially, we're just going to copy this compose file here. Um, and if you're not using Dockage, maybe you're using um, the command line, which is absolutely fine as well. Then all you've really got to do is find a nifty little place on your server. And we're going to do sudo nano... Uh, and we're going to do um, compose.yaml. Now, you could put this in a dedicated folder if you want to. I'm going to later, but just for t test purposes, I just wanted to show you what this looked like now. Uh, and then basically paste in your compose file. Now, we're not putting this on any particular network. You don't even need to have that network part there if you don't want it to. Um, but let's just quickly go down the compose file. So this is for any of you. This is if you've got uh, some method of putting your compose files together like Dockage, like I have, or if you're just using it on the command file like this. Um, so essentially, we've got the image, Arcane. We're using the latest, container name Arcane. Ports, it was 3000, 3000, but I have certain things running on 3000, so I switched that because, as you know, to the left of the colon, we can switch those things. Just leave things to the right. You don't want to mess with anything really on the right of the colon unless the app or developer has given you kind of instruction to do so. It's got the Docker socket here, and then it by default creates a volume down here um, and has like a volume that you can use. And you can go ahead and use that volume if you want to, just for testing purposes. Um, but because I also run my server with Casser OS, 
I've kind of selected that data app data type of path, but whatever works for you is fine. App ENV, we're going to go with production for now because we're not exposing this to anyone. And then I've created this random key, which I'm going to change at the end of all this. PUID and GUID essentially is just basically whatever your user identification and group identification um, number is, ID number is. Um, if I go into my server quite quickly, I'll show you how you can get that up now. It's as simple as just typing in ID on the command line. And as you can see there, Kflix for me is 1000. That's my user. And there's the group Kflix 1000. That's for me. You pick whatever you, yours is. And then obviously you can put them in here. This really sets the permissions um, for the app. Then um, it's got down here, public allowing secure cookies. I've selected true for now because I am testing this out. I reverse proxy all my applications through uh, Nginx Proxy Manager. Um, I don't expose my system to the internet anymore. I'm kind of using just WireGuard. Um, and I was considering using TailScale until recently when they had that little bit of a blip. So I think I'll wait until that uh, has fizzled out and then I'll, I'll move on with that. Um, but yeah, we're going to go with allow public insecure cookies just for now. And we'll come back in here and change that later and see what happens. So if you're happy with that, you can literally just do Control O to save. Save the file as a compose. Control X to get out. And obviously you can run sudo docker compose up to get that started uh, and working. And if you're running this in dockage, obviously you can just go up here and click the deploy button. Of course, if you're already uh, running it through the command line, it wouldn't let us do that. So if I just do arcane dash one for a second and that'll let us get in there. Now, if you have Casa OS and you want to run it through there, then you just go to your main Casa OS interface, hit the little plus sign, install a customized app, go to the top and select import at which point we'll put the compose file in that we copied and edited. So it should look like this. Click Submit, click OK, and then obviously just double check everything. So yes, Arcane, tag latest, put the port that we want, which is 3022. Yes, we've got our app data folder and the environmental variables. Don't forget our session secrets. Public and secure cookies true. If you also want to get an accurate uh, icon for Arcane um, in the icon Earl space here, if you go to self host uh, icons, which I'll leave a link in the description for, and search for Arcane, hover over SVG and right click, copy link address, um, and go back to your Casero instance, you can paste that over there to get your Arcane logo. And of course, uh, we can also put in the IP address that it needs to go to, 192 and 3022 is the place we set that to and click save. We should be good to go. Try running that again. There we go. And everything's running perfectly fine. So that's, that's how you install that into Casa OS if you want to do it that way too. So yeah, so there we go. If you, uh, whichever one you want to run it through, certainly do so. Um, after that's happened, all you've really got to do then is go to the um, IP address on your system and the port that we've selected, which is 301. Two, two. So if I do this, this brings us to the Arcane setup page. And, you know, it's pretty sleek com considering this has only been out since April 22nd. It looks like they've put a lot of dedication into this because it looks really professional. Um, so welcome to Arcane. Thanks for installing Arcane. Let's get you set up with a few things. So essentially the default admin password and the default username is going to be Arcane and the password is Arcane hyphen admin. So if we go in here, it lets us change these before we've even started, which is great because using my Vault Warden, I've already selected the password that I want to use. And I've got a video on Vault Warden if you're interested as well. Essentially, the initial setup is basically just saying, what do you want to do? Do you want it to check container status? Yes, I do. Polling uh, interval is going to be every 10 minutes. The Docker host obviously is set for us. Uh, and do you want it to auto-update containers? Absolutely not. Not a chance in hell. Now, you might want to go ahead and do that if you want to, but I've got a lot of sensitive containers that just simply auto-updating them can sometimes corrupt them. Um, so absolutely don't want to touch that, especially if you're running something like Image. Um, yeah, don't, don't go near that um, unless you absolutely know what you're doing. And then when I click go to dashboard, this is kind of where I had my raw emotion moment. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, straight off the bat, you can see the difference uh, between what I was using, which is Dockage here. This is the main interface of Dockage, and I've been using this for quite a long time, and it's very practical, it's very functional. But then you saw all this glitzy, glittery management features. You know, it's giving me 
running containers, images, Docker engine status, hardware and resources. It's got quick actions on here. Prune system tells me all the containers that I've got, the images that are currently being used. And then as we go down, and, and by the way, I'm now looking at this at the same time you are, because this is the first thing I saw earlier on before I stopped myself going any further. So we're literally exploring this together, as it were. So going down to containers, let's take a look. So yeah, it's got a nice container list. Tells us when they were last run. These are all our stacks. Um, and as you can see, so oh, okay, so it's picked up that the stacks are external, so obviously being run in dockage. Um, and then we've got an import function here. So lube logger, so that's car maintenance for me. So if I do import, what does that do? So lube logger, um, edit. Ah, well, that didn't really pull everything in, did it? Has that changed anything on on, uh, on here? Uh, so I'll look at my dockage quickly. No, nope, that's also so that's what it should look like. But that's all our king was able to pump into here. So that's not quite importing everything I needed to to. So if I come back out of there, did it just need a few more seconds? No, no. So that's definitely not imported everything. Um, maybe we can. See, that's what it should have looked like. Yeah. So that's something uh, that needs to be looked at uh, from our clean side of things, that import uh, functionality there. But it gives us the port. Um, then we've got all our images and what's unused. That's pretty handy, like that, because obviously that's taking up a lot of space there. Network. Okay, so we've got create networks, overlay networks, bridge networks, total networks. Okay, multiple pages. Oh, I like that. You can actually set that to see all of them. Great. And then volume control. Uh, and this is something that is not in um, Dockage at the moment, is the ability to control volumes. I mean, you can kind of create them, obviously, the old-fashioned way by doing it in uh, the Compose file, at which point it will pick up that. And it kind of uses the Docker socket to, to, to do a lot of that work. And then we've got our settings down here. So where it saves that information. Okay, no registry credentials. Oh, wow, so you can have multiple users in here. That is quite impressive. Considering I haven't set any database up, I'm, I'm assuming it's just built in naturally then. Okay. That is really, really good for teams and people that are in groups or, or use this maybe in businesses too. Security. So username installed in the system, yes. Use an external provider. Uh, be nice if we could have multi-factor authentication. Uh, I'm gonna check the GitHub out for that later. And then toggle the theme. Oh, obviously, we're going to leave it in dark mode. But yeah, that is great. I'm loving that. That's a much neater interface, a bit more information off the bat. Um, 32 cores, 64 gig RAM I've got. Not giving us anything more on that. I'm running the Ryzen 9 5950X CPU. Loving that. 20 out of 22 containers running. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. So... If I wanted to, so essentially the comparison to Docker, sorry, the comparison to Dockage is this. You literally, where I would come into Dockage and I would do Compose on Arcane, that's going into Stacks and clicking Create Stack. Yeah. Okay, built-in EMV2. So basically it's, 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 it's very similar to Dockage. It's, I would say, a little bit more polished with one or two bit extra features in there that just make that a little bit easier to use, like multiple users, multiple types of security settings. Um, and obviously, it's been out a lot... Uh, well, Dockage has been out a lot longer than Arcane. So, yeah, I like that. This could be a replacement for me, I think. Where things stand at the moment in terms of updates... I am really happy with that. So yeah, if you're looking for a Docker management system that gives you that in-depth information, that extra little bit of nitty gritty control that you crave, uh, and maybe you even want multiple users as well, um, Arcane could just be the thing for you. Um, I really hope we get some sort of multi-factor authentication in there. I'm pretty sure if I check the GitHub, there's gonna be a request for that, but that's great. So I hope, 
I've shown you something new maybe you didn't know about Arcane. Uh, I've only known about it for the last uh, couple of weeks myself, and today is the only day that I've actually put this on the system and had a look at this. So yeah, if you're, if you're interested, I'm going to leave all the links in the description below for you to get this up and running in no time. And yeah, and by the way, if you're a newbie to Docker, because I get a lot of comments on videos these days saying, you know, how do I even get this going? How do I even put a compose file in here? How do I do this? I have the noob home labber playlist um so if you're new to all this go through the playlist i've left a link in the description below for you and that'll get you kind of off the bat a quick course there's several different projects in there that'll get you going just play them in order get the go through them step by step and you'll be able to learn the basics and, and get up to scratch with the rest of us um on your home lab journey so that's great um thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it please subscribe if you haven't already like and share thanks very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one.